On the outer fringes of Gary, Indiana, in the suburbs of Hobart and Merrillville, sits the only live mall in this corner of the state. It isn't perfect by any means, but it is certainly surviving for being in an unlikely region. Let's get a closer look. A giant shopping mall for seven counties. The Richard E. Jacobs Group would be behind the making of this mall, having announced plans to build the mall in 1969. After clearing the red tape, the mall would be constructed in 1973 and would host a grand opening on September 18, 1974. Well, this is a weird moment for me. Something tripped the emergency stop on the escalators the moment I got on. What are the odds of that? Fortunately, they were restarted shortly after and I was able to resume. I'm surprised the security guard didn't say anything, to be honest. <laughs> Much better. Okay, now where were we? Oh, right. Advertisements in the paper bragged about how you could do it all without ever leaving the South Lake Mall. You could have breakfast, lunch, or dinner, get a prescription, buy health food, get a perm, service your car, or make the first payment on a wedding ring. The papers also highlighted how South Lake Mall was the first and only two-floor mall in Northwest Indiana. South Lake Mall's original anchors would be J.C. Penney and Sears. Only two anchors, but the mall itself had dozens of names already. Just to name a few, this included Lerner, The Limited, GNC, Just Jeans and Just Pants, B. Dalton, Aladdin's Castle, KB Toys, Hickory Farms, and Walden Books. Although I'm brushing past other stores, there was a strong opening in tenants alone. And add on to this, Carson Perry Scott would open an anchor store in October 4th, 1976, and in November 1978, L.S. Ayers would arrive to the scene alongside an expansion to the mall. South Lake Mall, as expected, was a hit, and would see a wide array of community events, including something called Camp South Lake Mall, which was meant to be a multi-day event that would provide children with various physical and creative activities, as well as giveaways for toys, balloon animals, and crayons. However, it wasn't all sunshine and rainbows. This being part of a decaying region, South Lake Mall was the site of many a property crime when a string of car thefts rocked the region in the late 80s. However, this didn't slow them all down, as while it never got a proper expansion, it did get two major out parcels in the form of Target and Kohl's in 1993. Fast forward to 2002, the Westfield Group would purchase the mall from the Jacobs Group, whom put the mall up for sale in 1999. South Lake Mall was part of the eight other shopping malls purchased by Westfield, and the deal would close at $756 million. Westfield would proceed to bring about some changes, updates, and additions to the mall, starting by renaming the mall from South Lake to Westfield Shopping Town South Lake. At this time, L.S. Ayers had long been acquired by and converted into a Lazarus.
Westfield would bring about Dick's Sporting Goods and Borders Books in 2006 and would bring in more out parcels, from a bank to a number of trendy restaurant chains. And around this time, Lazarus would be converted again into Macy's. Overall, things seemed like they were going well. But then, in 2011, Borders announced that all of their stores would be closing as the company entered Chapter 7 bankruptcy. However, Books A Million was more than happy to take their place shortly after. The mall even obtained a Cooper's Hawk Winery and Restaurant, which, as of the making of this video, appears to still be open today. Looks like we got another incident. In November 10, 2012, four teenagers went in for a round of shoplifting and ended up getting into a fight with security officers and police officers. One of the teens, who was carrying a firearm, decided to fire a round of 762 by 25 mm Tokarov into the ceiling, but the firearm jammed after that shot. The four were quickly dealt with and charged with an array of crimes while the mall would shut down and resume operations the next day. Now, teenage stupidity aside, 762 by 25 mm Tokarov. Someone reporting on that felt the need to point it out. And now the nerd in me is wondering what firearm was used because uh, that isn't exactly a common cartridge. It is a Russian cartridge. Very few manufacturers make it here, especially today. And it's best known for being used in a Tokarov TT-33, Russia's answer to the Colt 1911 in World War II, in a nutshell. I won't get into the thick of it, but that detail leaves me wondering... Let's get back on topic. Despite this serious incident, as well as Westfield selling the mall to Starwood Capital Group in 2013, the now Southlake Mall didn't show signs of slowing down. This mall ain't got no breaks, as Books A Million would relocate in 2014, and its old pad would become home to a Forever 21, and H&M would also open its doors in 2015. But finally, as the late 2010s began to roll in, cracks would begin to show as Carson's would close its doors in August 2018 since their parent company, Bonton, entered bankruptcy and liquidation. And in November 2019, Sears would close its doors for the last time. Two closures that are so predictable that I could almost go without saying it. Almost. Someone will complain if I don't mention it. September 2021. Within a couple of weeks of my visit, Dick's Sporting Goods would close its doors for the last time, announcing its plans to relocate across the street. However, it wasn't all bad news this decade, so far, as CubeWork would announce plans to convert the vacant Carson space in November 2022. And, later that month, Kids Empire would partially fill in the vacant Dick's Sporting Goods Inline occupancy still remains strong. Despite being in a particularly rough region of the state, South Lake Mall still continues and has ample opportunity to adapt to the times. You know me, I like a good Jacobs Mall. And although this one has been tampered with a fair amount, there's just something about it I cannot dislike. Maybe someone can figure out the words I need, but all I can say is I approve. Some people like to say that hexagons are the bestagons, but what about octagons? 
Jacob's malls had a lot of octagonal skylights from what I've seen in my travels, and they do a, a great job filling these halls with natural light. And they give you something to look at up in the ceiling to break up the many planes up there. And the mall is doing fairly decent. Not that many vacancies, a decent amount of foot traffic, and some major names. Of course, with the way some of you talk in my comments, I'm starting to wonder if some of you would rather watch these places burn down. I won't go into the details of what Hobart and Merrillville are like on area vibes. I mean, they're doing okay. But we're near Gary, and that alone should tell you a lot. So with location proximity in mind, I'm declaring this mall an anomaly. South Lake Mall is succeeding where others have failed. For now at least. Thanks for having me, Merrillville and Hobart. And until next time, this is Doomy Grunt wishing you and the South Lake Mall farewell and good luck in this mad, mad, mad world. Tripping the emergency stop on the escalators unexpectedly. Isn't that how horror movies start?